Now that you've learned about the classified balance sheet, we can add a new element to financial analysis and you'll see why you needed the balance sheet changed shortly in about 10 seconds. So if you want to take a quick look at this learning sequence for financial analysis, here we are. We're on the fourth analysis lesson right at this moment and we're going to, we're going to focus on case seven and the new stuff is common size values, which are the calculations you use to do what's called horizontal analysis or trend analysis. And of course, each time we keep applying what we already know, but we're learning this stuff right now. So with case seven, you're given a whole bunch of information, which at first looks overwhelming, but remember the spreadsheet's gonna do all the math. And you should immediately see why you needed to learn the classified balance sheet first, because you have now multiple years of values. The only way you're going to be able to lay this out is if your balance sheet was arranged uh, up and down, right? Vertically. So you've got all your values for your balance sheet up and down like this and the value say for building um, in multiple years going across. And likewise, down below, it doesn't have a title, but people who know what they're doing know that these are your income statement numbers, right? Your revenues then, and your expenses for each of the years indicated. It's customary, not, not necessarily required, but it's customary to put the most recent year in the first column after your labels, and then count down. Just seems to be the way it tends to happen most often, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I personally find that confusing. I like to read left to right, the right being the most recent year, but this tends to be the most common way. Um, again, it doesn't matter. Down below, we're going to look at these still. So these financial ratios and because essentially the purpose of a horizontal analysis, first let's talk about vertical, sometimes called vertical, is when you would look at what you already know how to do, a financial analysis for just this year. So in other words, you'd be looking vertically down this column and you'd come up with your financial ratios for solvency, profitability, cost control, that sort of thing. But there's something missing. And let me just highlight what's missing by saying, let's, let's say the current ratio. Let's say you calculated the current ratio to be two. And convention says two is okay. That's kind of ideal. That's, you know, a target. It's good, right? It means you can cover your current liabilities that are coming up in the next year two times over. You got some safety room. That's good, right? That's what you would conclude if this year is all the info you had. But what if last year the current ratio was three and the year before it was four? Now that two doesn't look as good, right? Because now it's clear that you're in a, your solvency situation is in a deteriorating trend. That's a totally different situation. It's one thing to know where you're at. It's another thing to know where you're at compared to where you've been. It gives you an idea of where you're going. And if the last three years have been down, 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 it gives you a pretty strong indication that next year will be down again unless something changes, right? It's a totally different perspective. And that is what horizontal or trend analysis is all about. So how do we do this? There are two things you have to remember. It's all grade nine math. This is all about comparing um, using what are called common size values. So over here, we're going to replicate the statements, but we're going to use common size values. And common size means converting every number to a common size so that they are all comparable. And in this part of the world, that common size value or ratio is almost always a per 100 number. So every value on a per one number basis, which means percent. So what you're going to do, I'll do the first one right here to show you, is there's two formulas for the balance sheet. Every value is divided by total assets. So in this column for 2018, every number on the balance sheet would be divided by total assets. So you would take cash, and you divide, slash for divide, you would divide it by total assets. And you hit enter, and you get 0.2, which means 20%. So we're gonna multiply by 100. You can use this percent number, but I hate it because it puts percent symbols everywhere. So I'm just gonna multiply by 100, and no, and I got this little thing up here, it says all values are percentages, right? So 22.4 means 22.4%, and that means this cash number is equivalent to 22.4% of total assets. And so very quickly, you're gonna see that all of these values and instead of trying to gauge how big they are relative to each other which is much harder with all of these numbers human human the human mind and the human eye aren't that, aren't that good at that so hence the invention of percentages so now every number is going to be a percent 
and it'll be much easier to spot values that are changing quickly relative to total assets. So if cash is, for example, and that's important because say if cash is going up or even down, it still might actually be growing in terms of how much of a percent it is of total assets, even though the value could be going down. That's hard to spot without common size values. So how do we do this quickly? Okay, this is the 21st century. You should be spend, spending 80% of your time on thinking and analysis and drawing conclusions and very little time on the actual calculations. So you need to know the shortcuts. So once you have this number in, there's something you should know about spreadsheets. When you copy it down, the cells this formula referred to go down as well. Notice how they're all one lower, right? This one takes this cash number, divides it by total assets. When I copied it down, this has now gone down a row, and so is this one. That's why we have this symbol. It means division by zero, right? Division by nothing. We're divided by this value. It's impossible. You don't want that. But you do want this number to go down as you copy, but you always want to divide by this number. And the trick in spreadsheets to do that is to put a dollar sign in front of what you do not want to change. And we don't want the denominator's row to change as we copy down or across. So we put a dollar sign in front of row 20, right? Because it's on row 20. So now that's ready to do this with. See how easy that was? You're not going to type in that formula every time. You're going to type it in once properly. So we don't have any values on this row, right? So we can delete these zeros. You can delete that. Don't delete a real zero, but a, a zeros where there's nothing on the row. You can delete all those. And, and that's how you would do it right for each each column so again just to be clear in this column you wouldn't divide by this number you would divide by the total assets for the year 26 2017 right and so on so the second formula is for the income statement and this one you divide everything by total gross revenue so same trick again you would take this number and you would divide it by total revenue times 100 to make it a percent right a nice attractive looking percent in a presentation like this uh, again, you need a dollar sign in front of this divisor, right, the denominator, so that it's always dividing by this value, because all of these values are going to be divided by total revenue, like this. And again, once you've done it properly, you can just copy it all the way down to profit, delete the zeros you don't need, and that's all you got to do. And if you're really clever and you do it totally properly, you can do that. So give that a crack, and then we're going to talk about it right check out the take up but remember once you have the numbers you're 20 percent done you then have to look at all the rows and spot what's changing put a little dot jot about what's happening what's good what's bad and why it might be happening and then when you're done this horizontal analysis you need to take sort of synthesize everything you've seen along don't forget these don't forget your financial ratios that you all know how to do now Compare what you've seen in the individual items on the balance sheet and income statement and incorporate those into your analysis for the financial position and performance in terms of these categories, solvency, debt burden, and profitability and efficiency. So give that a crack and then check out the take-up video.